how do people use my site? How do people click from one page to the next? And how can I know if it works or if it doesn't work? If there's one question that I get asked very often in one of my trainings, it's this question. Welcome to the channel. My name is Leon. Uh, I believe analytics is for everybody working in digital, whether you're a manager, a designer, a marketeer, a developer. It can help you improve your decision making and therefore can help you improve the quality of your work. And today I want to take a look at how to optimize your site based on user behavior. One of the reports that people turn to very often is the path exploration. You've probably seen it somewhere. I've, I've had it here on my screen. Uh, as you can see, it looks really cool. Uh, that is one of the benefits of this report. If you want to impress your colleagues, this is the report to turn to. So just put it on your screen and say, yeah, I'm analyzing the, the click path. I would also suggest that there are better options for analyzing the flow through your site from entrance to conversion, analyze where people uh, leave on your site. So uh, let's dive in. Well, first of all, I want to take a look at the path exploration and tell you what I believe is missing in this report. I believe this report has its place, but there are many other options available that are a lot better uh, for giving actionable insight. And the first problem with this report is it's that it's too detailed. When you have a report that is too detailed and doesn't give you like a, a clear overview of the flow through your site, it becomes less actionable. And the, the reason why it's so detailed is because uh, user uh, behavior is very unpredictable. People, they enter the site on different locations. From that location, for instance, the homepage, they can click in the menu on a couple of different buttons, but they can also scroll down and click on a link. Let's say if you have a website that has uh, 20 pages and you would uh, calculate all the different variations that are possible within that page in the case that people on average would visit three pages. So that, that would mean that there are 20 times 20 times 20, which is 8,000 different combinations. And that means that, that this report can get very detailed, very large. This is the report from my site, which is a very small site about my consultancy business. In, uh, in the Netherlands. But when your site gets larger, this report gets harder and harder and harder to read. So uh, I have two suggestions. Uh, if you want to optimize your site, I believe that are a, a lot better and a lot more actionable. So let's go. The first tip that I would uh, want to give you is not to take a look at click path immediately, but to take a little step back and take a look at entrances first. On, on GA4, there are many options. You could go to into reports and, and find landing page report there. I'm in the exploration section here. I've made a new exploration and I've made a report with a landing page in the first column. And then as values, I picked active users engagement rate and conversions. This is a kind of report that is a lot more actionable to me because when people land on your site, that's a very important moment. That's the moment that people decide if they want to stay on your site or want to leave immediately. And if people do not stay on your site but leave immediately, there is no click path. So I have here in this uh, in this table, I have a list of my, my top 10 landing pages and it's sorted on the amount of users that entered on that on those pages. And I can see that there are pages that have a little bit higher uh, engagement rate than um, than what the average is. So that that's a good thing. So that means people stay on the site more. But I also have some pages that have a lot less uh, engagement rate. For instance, this page on Google Tag Manager. and especially when you have paid traffic coming in. So you're actually paying, uh, for instance, Facebook or you're paying Google ads for people that enter in, into your site and you see a low engagement rate that, mean, that probably means that there's something wrong either with your advertising or with your landing page. And you wanna take a look at how you can optimize that. Because again, if people do not stay on your, on your site, there's no click path to optimize. So the first tip, is to take a step back and to take a look at the entrance where do people land on my site and where can I optimize that first. The second tip that I would give you is to take a look at uh, not the click path report, which is this, but to think about what are the steps that people need to take from entrance 
toward conversions that I can uh, analyze. It's called a funnel. To make it concrete, I want to give you two examples of, of like very common funnels that I would analyze. And the first one is like really simple. So I want to enter my, my own site. Uh, for instance, people could land on my homepage and, and that I can see that from the data. I have some landing pages here that most people enter my site just from the homepage. And from the homepage, it doesn't really matter where they click, but I eventually want them to uh, click to my contact form. And this is my contact form. So this is the second step. My first step would be the homepage. So let's just um, put that in a short note here. So my first uh, page would be the homepage. The second page would be the form page. So let's also put that in a note. That makes it real easy. And then um, I want people to uh, fill out this form. So I'm gonna, just gonna fill in the uh, a small test note. So there you go. It's not required. There you go. And I click send. And uh, this is already the final step in my, uh, in my funnel. I want people to fill out the form and then go to the thank you form. So there are three steps possible and people can take a different route. But in the, in the end, I just want to know, does this work? From beginning, from the entrance, where pe many people start their journey to the contact form, to the thank you page. And this is a very common scenario where you have maybe a big campaign running on paid media and there is a big landing page and from that landing page people can click through to sign up for an event or to apply for a job. From that uh, form we want them to fill out that form and we want to know does this flow work because we're paying a lot of money for people to enter uh, the site and to go through those steps and we want to know where in the site do, do people leave. So we can do this in GA4 by going into the exploration report. And I've already created one, it's here on the top, but you could also just create a blank report. Um, and I'm gonna create a new funnel exploration. On this report, we have a section called steps. And this is where it gets interesting. We can click this and we can define our step, the steps in our funnel. And I've already um, made up some steps here. I've, this is the first step. I want I want to analyze people that land on the homepage. So we make a definition. Who do we want to target in the first step? Under page slash screen, there's a field called page path. It doesn't really matter what you what you uh, pick here. Um, I would just go with page path plus query string and then contains. And then um, I'm just going to go with exactly matches this. So I'm just exactly matching my homepage. So this is the first step. I want everybody that uh, that enters on my homepage. So and the next step is contact. So the contact form people that go into my contact form. So technique is the same here. Page slash screen contains and then I need to fill out a page path. This is very important, otherwise it doesn't work. So I'm, I'm removing my um, domain name on purpose because the page path field does not contain the, um, the domain name. So I click apply. And then the, the last step is the thank you page. And um, the procedure is the same here. I need this portion. So page path contains and on the right I already see like a, a lot of things happening so I, I, I know that I have 14 users in my funnel right now which is not a lot but it's a small site so and this is what I get uh, I have my home page which, which is my most important landing page uh, on, on my site and then from that I see that 15% completion rate so 15% from that step go into the contact form and from the contact form, I see that only 17% actually fill out that form and go uh, into the thank you page. And this is a really important analysis because you, often you have like a landing page and you want to know if I spent my time somewhere, where do I spend it first? And it could be that from your landing page into your form page, there is uh, an enor enormous drop off. And then you see from the from the form page, you see 
likely also a drop off into the thank you page but it's less the most drop off is in the first step then you know i'm going to spend my time my energy my money i'm going to spend it on the landing page it could also be that there is um uh, maybe 50 percent click through through fr uh, from the, your landing page to the form which i would think is maybe not so bad and then from that page you see an enormous drop off into the into the thank you page and that would uh, back, that begs the question is there is anything wrong with my form is there something that i would need to optimize over there uh, can i spend my time my money my energy um, more efficiently when in in optimizing the form so this is really helping you deciding where to spend your time your money and your energy and this is the first and the most simple way to analyze a funnel on your site. And it, it gives you clear insight where you can optimize. So far, I've been uh, defining my funnel steps by URL. So it's just three single pages after another. But there are cases that this doesn't work. And uh, the, I think the most common example is um, when you have an online store. I don't have a store on my site, so I'm just gonna go into the demo version of uh, GA4. This is a small store that uh, uh, from Google that they have provided us the data with. So I can use that as an example. And this is a good example because I want to know who is visiting product list page. So not just one uh, product list page and it could be um, like an apparel page, this page or maybe uh, a notebook page. But I want to I just want to know how many people on any a product list page how many people are there and then from that i want to know how many people go from that page into a product detail page and again the, there are many products on this uh, shop so it would be very inconvenient to go through every url and fill out that by hand so that's not uh, convenient and if, then from that uh, I want to know how many people that visit a product detail page, how many people actually uh, add that to their cart. So they, they click to this. So that's the next step, add to cart. Oh, oops, add to cart. And then from that, I want to know how many people actually visit their cart. And, and from here we go into single pages. Uh, so we could do that with uh, the, the same method. And then from that, there's a checkout. So people need to sign in. We could add that to the funnel, sign in slash register. And then from that, there is a checkout and a purchase slash thank you page. And I want to show you how you would uh, go about doing this in GA4. As I've said before, there are many product list pages. There are many product detail pages. It's not practical to go over each individual URL. Uh, luckily, there is another way. I assume that if you have an online store, that recommended imp implementation is actually in place. So if you have that in place, you can go into an exploration report and then let's just create a blank report from here. So the first step here, we're gonna make our funnel and the technique is funnel exploration. And the steps are the same. So we're, we're gonna go into this section here, steps, and we're gonna define the steps that we have made up over here. So at first I wanna grab all product list pages, but in my condition, I cannot work with page, page path anymore because there are so many different a page path combinations available. So we need something else. And the thing that we're gonna use here is we're gonna go under events and under events, we're gonna look at view item list, which is like a common name for online stores that somebody actually has viewed an item list. We don't need to add any parameters. We, need, we give it the title and we pick view item list. The next step, and the procedure is the same here. The next step is product detail page and the product detail page has its own event so we're going to go under events again and we're going to pick view underscore item and this means that somebody actually has a viewed a product page and then the next step is we want to know how many people actually put something in their cart and that also has its own event it's called add to cart well the next step 
when people open up their cards to see how, what's in there. Same thing under events, there's an, an event called view card. That's the one that you would need here. The checkout step, you would find that under uh, events and then uh, begin checkout, there it is. And then the last step is purchase. And there's a dedicated event for that as well. And it's called purchase. So we have like six broad steps. And I can see that there are 34 users in here. Um, and I can click apply. And let's make the date section a little bit bigger. So we have a little bit more data to work with. So here we see there are over 100,000 people that visited the pro product li list page. Uh, not many people visit a product detail page. So it's only less, it's less than 40% from the percentage from that. And from that, there's um, a completion rate here of 5%. So people that from the product detail page actually put it in their cart. And this is the biggest abandonment rate in any step. So if I, if I, I would optimize this online store, this is the step that I would take a look at first. Is there something wrong with the product detail page that people that click use this page do not seem to click on the add to cart button? What's the reason for that? So that's it. We have seen a couple of examples on how to analyze user behavior based on landing page reports and after that based on funnel reports. And I believe those two are really helpful on uh, getting to know your site, getting to know the users on your site and uh, pinpointing the location where you want to optimize first. So if you've come so far in the video, this was my, this was my first video on this channel. I hope you like it. Uh, if you have any comments, if you have any questions, please leave them below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.